this course, Green Economy from China's Stories. Now, let's learn about the low-carbon economic practices in China. When countries around the world are following the historical trend and transforming their economies into a low-carbon one, what should China do to seize this opportunity? Let's take a look into the low-carbon economic practice in China. First, let's start with an introduction to the problem faced with China in uh, developing its low-carbon economy. Figure 1 shows the 10 countries with the highest total carbon emissions in 2009. As can be seen from the figure, China's carbon emissions had surpassed the United States, ranking first in the world. The annual total emissions of China and the United States are far higher than the other countries in the top 10. China and the United States, as two major carbon emitters, both had emissions exceeding 1.4 billion tons per year. While for India, Russia, Japan, and Germany, then those four countries are between 200 million and 440 million. The number was below 150 million for other four countries. From this international comparison on carbon emissions in 2009, we can see that China is in urgent need of no carbon economy transformation. Figure 2 shows the per capita emissions of the top 10 countries in 2009. China ranked only 9th with 1.4 ton per capita emissions except for India. The per capita emissions for the other 8 countries was far above that of China. The per capita carbon emissions of the United States was approximately 3.3 times that of China. The per capita carbon emissions of Canada was approximately 3 times that of China. Therefore, although China's total carbon emissions were huge, but its per capita carbon emissions was far below those of other major carbon emitters in the world. We have conducted a conclusion on the carbon emissions since 1851. Human society has been on a steep upward trend since 1950s. Most countries have been making efforts for acceleration their industrialization and urbanization. Europe and North America are the largest carbon emitters, with a total of 203.6 billion tons emissions, while the number for Asia is about 58.1 billion. According to the statistics of a cumulative carbon emissions from 1851 to 2006, the cumulative carbon emission of Europe accounted for 35.22% of that of the world and 32.64% of that of North America. The total of cumulative emissions of Europe, North America and Oceania accounted for 73.75% of that of the world. Since 1851, the world's carbon emissions have come mainly from developed regions which have experienced industrialization earlier, such as Europe, North America, and Oceania. Developing regions such as Central and South America, Asia, and Africa began producing small carbon emissions in the 1950s. Asia did not see an acceleration rate of carbon emissions until the 1970s. 
so its contribution to the world's cumulative carbon emissions is still much lower than that of those developed regions. So China should take limited responsibility in emission reduction in line with the emission history and facts. The above historical data review several facts. First, with huge current carbon emissions, China is facing a great challenge in carbon emission reduction. However, China's carbon emissions per capita are far lower than those of other major carbon emitting countries in the world. Moreover, China's carbon intensity is close to those of other major carbon emitting countries. Second, from the entire history of human carbon emissions, it can be seen that China's cumulative carbon emissions are far lower than those of developed regions. From 1751 to 2006, nearly three quarters of the cumulative carbon emissions of the world were contributed by developed countries such as North America, Europe, and Oceania. China's per capita carbon emissions have always been far lower than the world average level. And those of developed countries in Europe and America, in addition, before 1970, China's carbon intensity also was lower than those of major developed countries in the world. After 1970, China's carbon intensity has grown rapidly, but even being at the current stage, China's carbon intensity is just basically equal to that of the United States. From the history of growth rates of human carbon emissions, it can be seen that the growth rate of China's total carbon emissions has been increasing since 1970. But now the rate is still lower than those of developed regions such as Europe and the United States in the past 10 years. China's per capita carbon emissions have been increasing and now is likely to surpass the world average. Meanwhile, the growth of China's carbon intensity has been slowing down. Since the reform and opening up of China, fourth, from the international comparison, based on the same stage of economic development, we can see that China's total carbon emissions are higher than those of developed countries on the same stage, due to factors such as geography, economic aggregate, carrying capacity, population, exports, trade, and resource endowment. However, the per capita carbon emissions of China is far lower than those of the major developed regions and countries in the world. Fifth, when these major developed regions and countries of the world were at the stage of fast economic development and busy with industrialization, most of them had carbon emissions much higher than those China have today. In terms of cumulative emissions in the entire human history, developed countries are the major contributors to carbon emissions. If being put on the same stage of economic development, China will have carbon emissions much lower than those of developed regions and countries in the world. Therefore, on one hand, as a responsible big country, China ought to and uh, is willing to take responsibility for energy conservation and emission reduction. And uh, on the other hand, China is not obliged to sacrifice its own development to pay for the carbon emissions left over by those developed countries. Now we have learned the context for China's low carbon practice. Let's take a look what China has done about low carbon economy development. First, China has formulated low carbon economic development plans and set targets for emission reduction. In December 2009, 
The Chinese government announced its carbon intensity target, which was mainly to contain carbon dioxide emissions produced by per capita GDP. Second, the Chinese government has made great efforts to develop low carbon industries. Third, China has developed low carbon financial markets. Fourth, China has built low carbon pilot cities. Fifth, China has reformed its financial and tax systems for the low carbon economy and has carried out pilot emission trading schemes. Let's move on. This shows the investments of China, Japan, the EU, the US, and the world. China's green investment and low carbon investment accounts for 13.9% of its GDP this year. This number is much higher than those of Japan, the EU, and the US. Here, let's take a look at China's practices regarding carbon emissions trading. What is carbon emission trading? The concept of carbon emissions trading was introduced by economists in the 1990s. Emission trading is an important environment and economic policy for countries having a market economy. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has first applied carbon emissions trading to the management of air and river pollution. So, what is carbon emission trading? Carbon trading regulators and governments set a cap on the total greenhouse gas emissions that an industry, sector, region, or country may produce and then give or sell firms a permit which specifies a quota and can be treated between emitters. If the actual emissions from a firm exceeds the quota specified in the permit, then the firm is required to buy another quota from other enterprises in an open market. In October 2011, the National Development and Reform Commissions approved Beijing, Tianjin, Shanghai, Chongqing, Shenzhen, Guangdong, and Hubei to implement carbon emissions trading pilots during 2013 to 2015. In June 2013, Shenzhen's carbon emissions trading market launched the emission trading mechanism for the first time in China in the above cities and the provinces. For the past half year, Shenzhen's carbon market has been running steadily. Shenzhen is playing a role as an explorer in applying market mechanism to achieve low carbon development. In addition, China has made a lot of efforts to develop low carbon industries. For example, in the 13th five-year national strategic plan for developing emergency industry, China proposed to encourage green and low-carbon industries such as new energy vehicles, new energies, energy conservation and environmental protection industry to become pillar industries and anticipated that the value of output of these industries will reach at least 100 trillion yuan. 20 people have appeared on the 2009 Hurun Rich List, indicating that the low carbon economy has produced a wealth effect. Here is the map of paths to innovation and application of low carbon technologies. The 12th five year plan is the first stage of low carbon technology development. From 2010 to 2030 is the second stage. From 2030 to 2050 are the third phase. Different stages have different technical requirements for various industries. In addition, on July 19, 2010, 
the National Development and Reform Commission issued a notice advising five provinces, Guangdong, Liaoning, Hubei, Shanxi, and Yunnan, and other cities, Tianjin, Chongqing, Shenzhen, Xiamen, Hangzhou, Nanchang, Guiyang, and Baoding, to launch low-carbon pilot programs. The notice also requires these pilot provinces and cities to work out their targets for containing total green gas emissions, break down their targets into manageable indexes, establish a system to regulate local emission trading, a registration system and a platform to foster emission trading, and perfect institutional support for emission trading pilots. That is the situation of China's low-carbon pilots in the five provinces and eight cities. China has also run low-carbon pilot programs in other fields, such as legislation and the establishment of low-carbon tax policy in order to both support and regulate low-carbon practices. China has also has established and improved its regular carbon budget system, subsidy policies for low-carbon economic development, and other policies to promote government's low-carbon procurement. Non-governmental organizations also have done a lot uh, to promote low-carbon economy. Ant Forest, for example, is a charity program designed by Alipay for the first batch of carbon accounts. The carbon account users can reduce carbon emissions by their activities, such as working, traveling by subway, online payment of utility bills and traffic tickets, online registration, and online purchase of tickets. These activities can be used to raise a virtual tree in Alipay. After their virtual tree goes up, Ant Forest Ecological Partners from companies dedicated to environmental protection can buy the virtual tree from the account user and plant a real tree in the real world. As long as China sees the opportunity to develop a low-carbon economy at the right time, focuses on technological research and development during the process and provide the necessary financial and institutional support, it shall take an advantage position in the international low-carbon economy community. Well, that is the low-carbon economic practice in China. Thank you for your time. See you next time.